to it. I was off today, still getting to it. Stack us all. Welcome back to the Natty Daddy Experience. Ooh, ooh, man. Sean Combs, a.k.a. Puff Daddy, P. Diddy, Diddy, P. D. Love, or whoever the f*** you want to be. Buddy was arrested by the federal agents in New York following a grand jury indictment. He was taken into custody at a hotel in Midtown Manhattan where the Homeland Security agents, uh, they executed the arrest. So we all know by now about the allegations of sex trafficking and the drugs and all of that, yada, yada, yada. Well, the U.S. attorney came out on a press conference and he talked about the indictment. Y'all check this video out. Today I'm announcing the unsealing of a three count indictment charging Sean Combs with racketeering conspiracy, sex trafficking, interstate transportation for prostitution. The indictment alleges that between at least 2008 and the present, Combs abused, threatened, and coerced victims to fulfill his sexual desires, protect his reputation, and conceal his conduct. As alleged in the indictment, to carry out this conduct, Sean Combs led and participated in a racketeering conspiracy that used the business empire he controlled to carry out criminal activity, including sex trafficking, forced labor, kidnapping, arson, bribery, and the obstruction of justice. The indictment alleges that Combs abused and exploited women and other people for years and in a variety of ways. As alleged, Combs used force, threats of force, and coercion to cause victims to engage in extended sexual performances with male commercial sex workers, some of whom he transported or caused to be transported over state lines. Combs allegedly planned and controlled the sex performances, which he called freak-offs, and he often electronically recorded them. The freak-offs sometimes lasted days at a time, involved multiple commercial sex workers, and often involved a variety of narcotics, such as ketamine, ecstasy, and GHB, which Combs distributed to the victims to keep them obedient and compliant. As alleged, when Combs didn't get his way, he was violent and he subjected victims to physical, emotional, and verbal abuse so that they would participate in the freak-offs, and that Combs hit, kicked, threw objects at, and dragged victims, at times by their hair. In addition to the violence, the indictment alleges that Combs threatened and coerced victims to get them to participate in the freak-offs. He used the embarrassing and sensitive recordings he made of the freak-offs as collateral against the victims. And the indictment alleges that he maintained control over the victims in several ways, including by giving them drugs, by giving and threatening to take away financial support or housing, by promising them career opportunities, by monitoring their whereabouts, and even by dictating their physical appearance. Now, Combs did not do this all on his own. As I mentioned, Combs has been charged with RICO conspiracy. He used his business and employees of that business and other close associates to get his way. Those individuals allegedly included high-ranking supervisors in the business, personal assistants, security staff, and household staff. The indictment alleges that those individuals facilitated the freak-offs. They booked the hotel rooms and stocked them with the supplies, including drugs, baby oil, personal lubricant, extra linens, and lighting. During the March 2016 incident at the LA hotel that I mentioned earlier, a member of the hotel security staff intervened and Combs attempted to bribe the staff member with a stack of cash to make sure that what happened was kept quiet. And as the indictment alleges, in late 2023, after public allegations were made about Combs' crimes, he and others pressured witnesses and victims to stay silent including by making phone calls to witnesses and victims and giving them a false narrative of what they had experienced. In March of this year, special agents from HSI executed search warrants at Combs' residences in Miami and Los Angeles. They also executed a warrant for Combs' electronic devices. During those searches, agents seized evidence of the crimes charged in this indictment. They seized firearms and ammunition, including three defaced AR-15s, 
and the large capacity drum magazine. They also seized evidence of the freak-offs, electronic devices that contain images and videos of the freak-offs with multiple victims. And they seized cases and cases of the kinds of personal lubricant and baby oil that Combs' staff allegedly used to stock hotel rooms for the freak-offs, more than 1,000 bottles altogether. As you can see here, this is a drum magazine, large capacity, and it contains, I believe, 59 rounds. I mentioned as well, we recovered three AR-15s. This is a close-up shot of one of the AR-15s, and you can see right here, the serial number has been thoroughly defaced. Does your office intend to, to seek remand, or are you reaching a bail package? And if you're willing, can you, how would you contrast this with the R. Kelly case in, in EDNY, in terms of the elements? Thanks. So um, we will be seeking detention. We have filed a letter um, laying out our reasoning uh, for seeking pretrial detention. Um, I'm not going to be able to expand beyond what's in the letter, but it contains um, all of the reasoning, and it contains uh, the law as well. Um, there is a presumption of detention in a case like this, and we think that's warranted. Is your office concerned with, uh, with Combs' safety in custody, given, um, given what happened with Ep Epstein? So we are concerned with anyone's safety whenever they are um, detained prior to trial. It's part of our obligations to keep people um, safe as well. Um, it's part of the criminal justice system. So, um, but I do not draw any sort of connection between um, Jeffrey Epstein's suicide and um, what may or may not happen um, to any other defendant while they are um, detained pretrial. And of course, the decision whether to um, detain the defendant will be up to a judge. Our position is that pretrial detention is warranted under the law and based on the facts of this case. Um, and I'll leave it at that. With Diddy coming out with his towel on and stumping a mud hole in her, man. Uh, he also noted that while the two were in love, they cheated on each other for years. And Cassie eventually married her trainer, whom Diddy had hired for her. And now, you know, Cassie got a couple kids by him. And Diddy lawyer also is alleging that Cassie tried to extort Diddy over a book deal, offering to sell him the rights for thirty million dollars before filing that lawsuit that she had filed. So, ladies and gentlemen of the YouTube jury, ask yourself one question: Did he do it? Ah, 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 ah. No, but for real, man, it seems like Diddy and his team, you know, they're trying to put up a fight in court. So we're going to see how this unfold and I'm going to keep you guys up to date. But for now, y'all jump in them comments and drop y'all two cents. Let me know what y'all think about this situation, man. Is Diddy done for? Let me know something.